This is the fatal exchange. The Cobra immediately disengages, thrashing in pain. This is an apex assassin. A predator defined by sophisticated neurotoxins and intelligent, specialized target selection. Its entire weapon system is engineered to deliver a single, decisive, surgical strike. So why is it engaging a target that makes that strike unwinnable? In the profound silence of the humid night, the Western Ghats conceal a universe of life drenched in the dew of ages. The King Cobra versus the Porcupine. This is not a battle. It is a strategic paradox. A fingal error in risk assessment where an apex predator's greatest strength becomes its single point of failure. To understand the outcome, we must first deconstruct the assets. Asset profile. The assassin. The King Cobra, Ophiophagus hana, is not a typical snake. The name Ophiophagus means snake eater. This is a specialist. It is an intelligent hunter that actively tracks and engages other apex predators, including vipers and smaller pike. Its entire biology is optimized for a high-risk, high-reward engagement model against dangerous targets. The primary weapon is a sophisticated chemical payload. While many snakes possess neurotoxins, the King Cobra delivers a massive volume, a cascade failure for the victim's nervous system. The delivery system is equally advanced. Large, forward-fixed fangs, designed not just to prick, but to inject. Its objective is always the same. Achieve a single, decisive bite, deliver the payload, and disengage. This is the jungle floor, a realm of constant decay and rebirth, where every moment is a struggle for survival. Asset Profile the fortress. The Indian crested porcupine, Hystrix indica. This asset presents a unique strategic problem. It is not a combatant. It is a walking fortification. Its defense is not active. It is a passive, deterrent-based system that punishes contact. We must analyze the quills not as fur, but as a multi-layered area denial system. There are long, thin quills for visual deterrence and rattling, a first level warning. But beneath these are the tactical weapons, short, thick, barbed quills designed for immediate penetration and detachment. The Western Ghats, a realm shaped by the monsoon rains, here, life thrives in the perpetual embrace of humidity and shadow. This brings us to the core battlefield asymmetry. The porcupine's defense is designed to make contact, a critical failure for the attacker. This is not a predator-prey dynamic. This is a surgical tool facing an impenetrable barrier. The engagement begins. We observe the cobra's initial approach, as shown on the tactical display. This is not a high-velocity blitz attack. It is a classic probe, an intelligence-gathering maneuver. The cobra is testing the porcupine's defensive posture, attempting to back its vulnerabilities. It circles the target, its hood flared, a standard threat display. The objective of this display is to control the opponent's behavior, to intimidate it into a mistake, that the porcupine's response is immediate and 100% defensive. It pivots, keeping its rear a dense matrix of quills oriented toward the threat. As we are illustrating here, this creates a 360 degree area of denial. Every angle of attack is a kill zone for the attacker. 
the cobra has no viable entry point. The head and underbelly are completely masked. The rattling of the long, hollow quills is a constant acoustic warning, a no trespass signal. The cobra's sophisticated brain is now processing conflicting data streams. It fails to classify the porcupine as a non-combatant, hidden within the shadows. A fatal mistake is about to unfold. This is the first critical error. Misidentification. The cobra now has to make a decision. Disengage or escalate. It perceives the porcupine's passivity as an invitation to apply superior force. It lunges. The cobra is attempting to bait a reaction, to force the porcupine to expose its vulnerable front, its head. But the porcupine's programming is a simple, non-negotiable script. It does not think, it reacts. It has only one tactical response to proximity, reverse. The quill push. the moment the cobra enters the red zone. This single, simple tactic completely inverts the battlefield logic. The predator, expecting to cause a reaction, is now forced to react to a sudden, unanticipated offensive defense. The cobra rears back, surprised. Its feint was met with a disproportionate physical counter. The probe has failed, and the cobra has gained no useful intelligence, only confirmation that the defense is real. Now, the final calculation. It is now in a state of tactical frustration. It reverts to its primary, apex predator solution. It has two options. Option A, disengage. Recognize the invalid target, conserve energy, and retreat. Option B, commit. Override the failed probes and execute a full, committed, all-in strike. It makes a fatal assumption that its speed and venomous payload will be decisive before the counter-defense can be fully deployed. The Cobra moves forward coiling its neck into the S-shape for maximum strike velocity. The porcupine remains static, its back presented. A perfect target, or a perfect trap. The cobra strokes. It lunges, aiming for the main body mass, intending to inject its payload and immediately retract. This is the exact moment the entire engagement was building toward. The Cobra executes its apex weapon system, and the Porcupine's defensive system performs perfectly. The strike makes contact. What we are analyzing here is a catastrophic multi-point weapon system failure. First, the delivery system. The Cobra's bays, designed to penetrate scale and high, are completely nullified. As the graphic shows, they hit a dense forest of keratin. They likely never reach the skin. Third, and most critical, the counterattack. The porcupine's quills, barbed and passive, deploy exactly as designed. They do not need muscle, or aim, or intent. They only require the attacker's contact. The Cobra's own strike velocity provides the kinetic force for its own impalement. The porcupine's reverse barbed quills detach from its body and embed deep into the Cobra's head, jaw, and neck. This is the fatal exchange. 
the Cobra has delivered zero payload and inflicted zero damage. The Porcupine, without ever launching an attack, has delivered a devastating counter blow. The Hunter has become the casualty, not through combat, but through a critical, systemic error in target validation. The Cobra immediately disengages, thrashing in pain. The Porcupine, objective achieved, simply walks away. But the engagement is not finished. The Quills are now the primary threat. They are a delayed action weapon, a septic time bomb. The Cobra cannot remove them. Every movement of its jaw or neck muscles, every attempt to hunt, drives the barbs deeper. Infection becomes a certainty. The ability to hunt, to even swallow, is compromised. It was a catastrophic intelligence failure. A failure to correctly identify the nature of the target. It processed the porcupine's static, passive defense as a challenge to be dominated, not a trap to be avoided. The Cobra's strike is a masterpiece of chemical and biological engineering. The Porcupine's defense is a simple, mechanical system designed for one singular purpose, to deny that contact. It is a hard counter that nullifies the Cobra's entire tactical playbook. This brings us to the core strategic principle. It is a passive defense environment. The Cobra's confidence in its strike was the precise vulnerability the Porcupine's defense was engineered to exploit. The Porcupine's defense is a perfect hard counter, a system that exploits an attacker's own force. A great migration a relentless journey driven by instinct, 